have a few things about irreducibility by now, but this one ends up being very important. Let's suppose we have a prime and we've got a polynomial with integer coefficients, degrees greater than or equal to one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficients of that polynomial and reduce them modulo the prime that we pick. If that polynomial, two things about it, if it's irreducible over the integers mod p and the degree of that polynomial matches the degree of the original polynomial, then we can say that that polynomial is irreducible over q. It's important to realize that we've shown that if it's reducible over q, then it's reducible over z. So by contrapositive, that means if it's irreducible over z, it must be irreducible over q. And that's kind of how that comes about. I'm not going to prove this. It basically comes down to just showing that if it factors in z, it's going to factor in zp. So let's take a look at an example of how this is so amazingly useful to us. Let's say I have the polynomial. 7x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x plus 3. In general, it's very hard to tell if this thing's irreducible in the integers. However, let's go ahead and do this and let's use p equals 2. It's a very common one to use. So if I reduce all the coefficients mod 2, I get x cubed, that becomes 0, plus x plus 1. Now, that's a cubic polynomial in z2x. And a previous theorem is that if a cubic polynomial factors, then it must have a 0 in that field. So there's only two possibilities, 0 and 1. If I say 0 cubed plus 0 plus 1, I get 1. If I do 1 cubed plus 1 plus 1, again, everything's mod 2, I get 1. So there's nothing that's a 0 of this. So this is irreducible in z2 of x. That must mean that this is irreducible in Q. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's say I had 3 sevenths x to the fourth minus 2 sevenths x squared plus 9 thirty fifths x plus 3 fifths. So first thing I can do is I can go ahead and clear out the denominators. So basically if I multiply by 35, I get 15x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus 9x plus 21. I'll do the same kind of thing if I reduce that using p equals 2, we get x to the fourth plus x plus 1. Unfortunately here, this isn't a cubic. Well, to some extent it's fortunate because the degree here has to match to use this theorem. But because it isn't a cubic, because it's a uh, quartic, we can't just say that if it doesn't have a zero, then it's irreducible. Now we still can say that, I mean, we can still check that zero to the fourth plus zero plus one gives us one, one to the fourth plus one plus one gives us one. So this still says that it has no linear factors. So 
So if this thing factors, it must have a quadratic factor. Now, because it has a quadratic factor, and we're doing it in Z2, there are really only two possibilities. It could be x squared plus 1, or it could be x squared plus x plus 1. It has to have the plus 1 because of the plus 1 here. If we didn't have a plus 1 on the quadratic, there's no way we could get a plus 1 for our final thing, final product. So, now I can say this one isn't there because this actually factors as x plus 1, x plus 1 in Z2, and we already said it has no linear factors, so that's out. So the only possibility is this. It's a little bit annoying, but we can check that, because it's only one case, by doing a long division. If I do x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus x plus 1, and I divide by x squared plus x plus 1, gives me an x squared subtract uh, gives me an x up top subtract that all cancels and so I've got a remainder of x plus 1 because I've got a remainder it doesn't divide in so there we go a lot harder to check that it was irreducible in Z2x, but still, it was irreducible in there, so that must mean the original polynomial was irreducible in Qx. Another theorem we've got here is called the Eisenstein criterion, and what that says is if we've got a polynomial with integer coefficients, and we've got a prime that doesn't divide into the leading coefficient, does divide into all the other coefficients, and then finally, the constant term, p squared does not divide that, then that polynomial is irreducible over q. So how does that work? If Say I've got something like 2x to the fourth plus 9x cubed minus 6x squared minus 12x plus 3. If I take p equals 3, p does not divide into 2, p does divide into 9, 6, 12, and 3, but p squared 9, 9 doesn't divide into 3. It's that simple. This polynomial must be irreducible over q. Again, I'm not going to actually prove that. It has to, uh, but it's easy enough to use once you've got it. One final little thing here, and it's a little bit clever the way this is proved, is that if we've got a particular polynomial, which is x to the p minus 1 over x minus 1, which when you do that division, it just ends up being 1 times all the different powers of x less than p, that polynomial, no matter what the prime is, that's going to be irreducible over q. Now, it is important that p has to be a prime. This is not necessarily true if we had some other integer. This video is getting long. I don't have time to prove this, but it's a little bit clever. What they really do is they say, let's take this and let's put in x plus 1 for x. So we get x plus 1 to the p minus 1 over x. Because it's x. When you expand that thing out, you get something that you can use the Eisenstein criterion on. 
And then it's just simply showing that because it factors here, the original one must factor must not factor either. Basically, if one is irreducible, the other has to be irreducible as well.